Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to thank all those that took part in an enormous democratic exercise in this country, which in concluded with me being elected as leader of the Labour Party and leader of the opposition. I think we can be very proud of the numbers of people who engaged and took part in all those debates. I have taken part in many events around the country and had conversations with many people about what they thought about this place, our parliament, our democracy and our conduct within this place. And many told me that they thought Prime Minister's question time was too theatrical, that Parliament was out of touch and too theatrical, and they wanted things done differently, but above all, they wanted their voice heard in Parliament. So I thought my first Prime Minister's question time, I'd do it in a slightly different way. And I'm sure the Prime Minister is going to absolutely welcome this, as he welcomed this idea in 2005. But something seems to have happened to his memory during that period. Um, and so I sent out an email to thousands of people and asked them what questions they would like to put to the Prime Minister. And I received 40,000 replies. Now, there isn't time to ask 40,000 questions today, and uh, our rules limit us to six. And so I would like to start with the first one, which is about housing. Two and a half thousand people emailed me about the housing crisis in this country. And I asked one from a woman called Marie, who says, what does the government intend to do about the chronic lack of affordable housing and the extortionate rents charged by some private sector landlords in this country. Prime Minister. Prime Minister. Well, first of all, Mr. Speaker, can I congratulate the Honourable Gentleman on his resounding victory in the Labour leadership election? Can I welcome him uh, to the front bench and to these exchanges? I know we will have many strong disagreements, I'm sure, between us uh, at these exchanges, but where we can work together in the national interest, we should do so. And I wish him well in his job. Uh, uh, if we are able to change Prime Minister's questions and to make it a more genuine exercise in our asking questions and answering questions. No one would be more delighted than me. I actually felt, I felt last week, I felt last week where we discussed a substantial issue with substantial questions and proper answers was good for our house, good for our democracy, and so I welcome it. Now let me answer very directly Marie's question, because we do need to see more affordable housing in our country. We delivered 260,000 affordable housing units in the last parliament. We built more council houses in our country than in the 13 previous years had been managed, but I recognise much more needs to be done. That means carrying on with our form of the planning system. It means encouraging the building industry to come up with innovative schemes like starter homes. But above all, it means continuing to support the aspirations of people to be able to afford their own home, which is where help to buy and schemes like that come in. But I'd say to the honourable gentleman, we won't get Britain building unless we keep our economy going. Yeah. Yeah. Jeremy Corbyn. I thank the Prime Minister for that answer, and I thank him for his commitment that we're going to try and do Prime Minister's question time in a more adult way than we've done in the past. 